What does it take to shoot a feature film? Probably a bunch of money that probably costs you half a house deposit, right? Something to support that lighting and the logistics of all the people involved. All the dynamic range a man could ask for. All the slow-mo and sweet, sweet sharpness you could need. And of course, that sweet branding name to prove that you are a real filmmaker, right? Kind of like these guys? Yeah, probably. That's what it takes to shoot a feature film, right? All the money and time in the world with the best gear possible to tell your story. Or you could be like this guy, living his best life. So back in 2017, I had my opportunity to act as a cinematographer for a feature film. At the time, I'd done a few shorts, some music videos, some local work, yada, yada, yada. But somebody was willing to trust me with their script and shoot a whole feature film. However, we're always talking on this channel, the best cameras, the camera you got, right? Well, this is what I had. This is the Panasonic Lumix GH5. If you were somebody that wanted to either start filmmaking or start YouTube or videography in the years of like 2016 through 2018, you probably heard of this camera or debated investing in this camera. Now this might be less of a how-to tutorial breakdown type video and more inspirational, but you know, if I can get at least one person to watch this and feel like they can take what's ever in front of them and go make a movie, I will call this a win. So I guess I'll just talk about the kind of hows, whys, and kind of growing pains, but in the success story of using the GH5 on an actual feature film. This camera may have been something Panasonic made with video forward thinking, but at the end of the day, ergonomically, it's built like a photo camera. Functionally, it's built like a photo camera. And overall, it's sensor included, it's built like a photography camera. This camera was not designed for a feature filmmaker or cinematographer in mind, maybe a videographer or somebody starting in cinematography, but this camera was not made for a film set. It doesn't have the functionality to really work with other crew members, i.e. something like time code, unless you get external pieces or even audio for that matter. However, I consider that to be a very small pain. Well, me personally, I take functionality. I find out not so much how is the camera going to handicap me, but more, okay, cool. What can I do with this camera? So what could I do? I knew I could get a good image. I could get a good, clean 4K image, Panasonic V-Log, a very color gradable. <laughs> That's a weird way of putting it. And I could just do my thing. That's a big thing with this camera too. I wondered, can I still shoot the way I've been shooting? But when I started playing around the GH5 more and paired it up with the old trusty official lens of YouTube, the Sigma 18 to 35, I started to realize, okay, maybe I actually can shoot exactly what I've been doing recently. I could shoot my natural light scenes that I like. I could get those depth in the shadows that I like, and I can get that nice, uh, I guess at the time I was really obsessed with the, the teal part of the teal orange push. <laughs> Overall, for the two weeks that we shot this feature, this camera held up. There was never an image I took that felt like it was breaking or I wasn't getting enough out of it. There may have been one or two low light scenes that I had to get a little creative with the lighting, but I was able to push the ISO just a little bit more. We get some lights in there. And that's another thing about this film. We did not have like big professional HMIs or Lico's or we didn't even have something like my Pavo tubes that I have lighting my face right now. My main sources of light were windows, crappy little Amazon lights, a couple RGB tubes that were designed more for like a gamer's desk than it was a film set. And then some like um, Chinese lantern style diffusion holder things. But even with all that, I pretty much just had to rely solely on my ability to see where light falls 
and the ability for the GH5 to capture the area. And guess what? It was 100% possible every day we shot. Now the lens we shot this entire film on was the Sigma 18 to 35, which at the time was probably the most popular lens that you were gonna find for DSLRs, especially for filmmakers at the time. I think it's a friggin' tried and true tested lens. I friggin' love the thing. And it gets a little bit of a bad rep. The very popular thing to do now is to get vintage lenses or to throw pro mist in front of your glass and I don't know, I think it's a little too much. I'm not big on like the putting on a quarter pro mist or even an eighth pro mist in front of my image because I think it muddies it too much. It gives it this like soap opera-y kind of look and I'm like, I don't know man, it's not for me. And people say that you get too pristine, too sharp of an image through something like the Sigma. Well, I could have fooled me. Yeah, objectively speaking, as a photography glass, the Sigma art lens is sharper than something like a more vintage lens or a cinema lens where they're looking for softer tones and more smooth fall off in the skin and the highlights and the shadows. But again, it all just comes down to, do you know what you're doing? I've taken the Sigma home plenty of projects and got what I consider a very filmic look. My whole documentary, The Last Shot, which I wanted to have an extremely, almost film stocky kind of look, the whole thing was either shot in the 18 to 35 or the Sigma R50 to 100. The whole thing. There was no filtration, no pro miss, no anything like that. It was just the lens on the camera. I just used Film Convert to get the film stock colors and then from there did a little bit of grading. So even if you have something that people are claiming is a sharp clinical lens, you, by all means, have the power and capability to be flexible with that image. Here's the thing, man. I want to keep this one short and simple because I just want to make something very clear for this channel and for YouTube going on for me. I do talk about gear a lot. I do think gear matters, but not in the way that these companies want you to think that gear matters. Cameras are coming out so fast. They're being updated so rapidly that you buy one camera like me. When I bought the Ursa Mini Pro G2, the friggin' 12K came out a month later. The fact that there's like 15,000 iterations of the Canon Cinema line, all I'm getting at here is that, yes, I do think gear matters, but only in the same way where it matters what pen you use to write your notes with. They're all just tools. And you should be able- ah. Raya, come on baby. You guys haven't seen this little baby in a while, huh? She's gotten big. She's gotten big. Hi, baby. Oh. <laughs> Yo, good girl. <laughs> Take into consideration that you may have to be in a place where you consider something like, do we use an Ari? Do we use a red? Do we use a black magic to shoot a movie? But you also might want to consider your skills and your confidence as a cinematographer to be able to take something like this camera here, or even something lesser, and say, yes, I can film this project. Because when it's time for you to figure out your day rates or what you're worth as a filmmaker, the first thing that's going to hike up the price and that's going to make your value known is your ability to make a scene, your ability to light people, to light environments, and to tell a story through a friggin' camera. Because if you can do that and shoot something that supports the writing, it supports the directors and the actors and everyone else on set, I don't care if you have a rock. I consider you a good cinematographer or a good filmmaker. As I, and probably you as well, move forward in your career, you're gonna find yourself more and more using cameras that are higher in budget, that hit these very pretty price tags or have these very pretty names attached to them. And I do understand that people coming to this channel are probably those that are still working with stuff like pocket cams and more budget gear. But budget never means bad. It means three things. One, it means you have a camera and you're able to film something and that's awesome. Go ahead and do that. Two, it means you're still learning, you're still honing your craft, which is awesome. It's the best time to make mistakes and go make a crappy film and then out of nowhere you start making some genius stuff. That's what happened for me, I'm sure it'll happen for you. Or three, it just simply means you're not there yet and that is okay. Your success will come if you continue to put effort forth. Before you know it, you will go from shooting a feature film 
on a photography camera with a photography lens, proving your worth and what you can do with the gear that is limited to you. And that is what's going to make people trust you, want you, and then want to create with you. Uh, reading through the comments, everybody was kind of, I think, hoping more for more budget talks. Sorry, this wasn't more of a breakdown. I think in the future, I might do a comparison shooting the same scene with the Ursa versus shooting it with something like the Panasonic GH5, just to show you that the skill is going to overtake the gear every time. But, you know, if anything, gear gives us that flexibility. And hey, don't be afraid to fact check us. If I just said some dumb crap, call me out. I'm here for it. Let's go. Teach me. There are plenty of people watching these videos that are smarter than me. Just so you know, for the next week or two, behind the scenes of two short films are going to be paramount. Specifically, the newest short film that we have coming out in about a month called Herself. And hopefully breaking down a little more of both why we make these films and how we make these films. Thank you guys so much for giving the channel the little boost it's had lately. I'm very humbled by the reception, by the comments, by the conversation, the compliments. You guys are amazing. And I hope to see you on the next video. I don't know why I keep doing that. It's like, I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll goodbye.